Hello, and my name is Peter Rushmer, and I'm your host today of a Half Dozen Things podcast. A Half Dozen Things is a podcast for business owners and professionals just like you. Whether you're an underdog hungry for success or you're already smashing it but want to continue to level up, we're here each week for you to get insight and learning from the very best in the business. No fluff, no BS and no self-proclaimed gurus talking about how easy business or life is. Just real, frank and raw conversations. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, LinkedIn and Facebook. How is everyone today? I hope you're all doing really well. Um, here I am, um, here to speak to you today about operator compliance and and, and risk score, uh, so OCRS in, in our language, and um, hopefully this will be useful. So for those of you that are transport managers in bigger fleets, um, this will be a little bit like sucking eggs, so uh, no need to really listen in too much, but this is something that we're picking up increasingly that we are able to support smaller operators who don't necessarily uh, operate heavy goods vehicles and recognise themselves as transport managers. There's lots of drainage companies out there, scaffolders, um, skip hire companies, for example, who don't necessarily um, run vehicles uh, to to the same extent as what uh, standard national and international operators will do. So, um, therefore, they may not have the expertise in-house that will help support them. So, uh, yeah, afternoon, Martin. Good to see you. Hope you're doing okay. Um, Yeah, they they may not have the same level of expertise within the business. So, therefore, this is there to help them. Certainly, I've been in a position which has helped lead me to be in the position that I'm in now uh, as flagship back in the day when I was in my early 20s. I was put in charge of a fleet of recovery vehicles, which we used for a body repair center and uh, on a restricted operator license. And I didn't really know the first thing about it. I didn't really understand what I needed to do. Uh, I didn't understand the operator license undertaking. So this video is for anyone who is in a similar position or to share with anyone in a similar position, because really they need to have that that help that they need. And certainly I went about learning it and found out, you know, the hard way and went through a bit of pain in doing so um, to make sure that the vehicles were safe. Uh, I, obviously, since I've uh, got the operator CPC qualification, but obviously in a lot of uh, restricted transport operators, they may not have someone with that qualification. So, that, if that sort of resonates with you, you may not even know what an OCRS score is. Um, but essentially, anyone who uh, it runs vehicles that are three and a half tons or over will need to have an operator license. And anyone who's got an operator license will have a risk score profile based on um, how they perform um, with regards to roadside checks, MOT performance, etc., which will help ensure or help the DVSA to work out if, if operators need some support or they need some help on um making sure that they comply with the uh, with the operator license undertaking. So it's a bit of a tricky, tricky business. And uh, the expectation is, is when you agree to the operator license that you will undertake those obligations. So uh, part of that is making sure that vehicles are taxed, insured and MOT'd, uh, checking that vehicles have the, that drivers have the right license to drive the vehicles that they're driving making sure that vehicles and trailers are roadworthy and to not overload them, as well as obeying drivers out and tachograph rules, which in themselves can be quite complex uh, too, particularly if you haven't got the operator CPC. Making sure that drivers do daily walk-around checks um, and making sure that they're recorded in writing before driving, so that might be on an app or, or recorded in writing. Uh, keep vehicle maintenance and driver records for 15 months um, and to make sure that the Operators don't operate more than the number of vehicles that are stated on their operator license as well. That's a quick way to get into trouble too. Making sure that you only use the operating centre that's stated on your license and making sure that you keep the traffic commissioner notified within 28 days of any convictions for the the operator license holder, the director of the company or any of your staff, um, as well as any change in maintenance agreements um, and changes in entity and financial status as well. So there's, there's quite a lot to to. to go on there and obviously if you're a scaffolder or you're uh, a drainage company or you're 
someone who just is doing good, you know, we've worked on behalf of engineering companies who run one vehicle they produce and create their own their own goods, and then they use one one eighteen ton vehicle to to move stuff goods from one place to to another where they get sold, and um, you know they haven't got a transport manager on site. So hopefully this will be useful for you. You may not even know what an OCRS score is. So um, hopefully that'll be a bit enlightening. So just going to cover the basics here if you need any additional help or anything like that then you just need to reach out and give us some help which is actually or give us a shout which is the, the fifth area that i mean to uh, that i'm going to discuss anyway so the first quick win is to make sure that you've got your goods vehicle licensing sign on for online so you can apply for your goods vehicle operator license online um you can make amendments to it. It's a really simple world. There's a lot of people who still try to go old school, particularly when we help with O-license applications. They've printed off the paperwork and they've started to write it out. Well, guess what? It goes through a lot quicker uh, at the Office of the Traffic Commissioner if it's done digitally. Um, get, get your sign-in sorted out. We can help doing that. That's, you know, a really easy thing to do. But once you've got that access to the goods vehicle operator online system, you need to just make sure that that is kept up to date. That's the first check I do as soon as we start working with any operators, just make sure that that's correct, okay? So it'll make sure that the people are in the right seats, making sure that the directors are correctly named, correct the, making sure that the correct entity is in place. So we can tick off a lot of those. I've just listed off a lot of the undertakings that are required. And we can just quickly tick through all of those and get those sorted out to make sure that that's all correct on there. And it's quite easy to actually make the amendments that we need um, without without too many issues at all, um, particularly making sure that vehicles are taken on and off so you don't have any old vehicles on there and that you've got your current vehicles too because you need to make sure that you've got the right operator license disc inside your vehicle too to make sure that the, the traffic commission is notified, you know, there's big operators that I've come across that forget to do that when they have higher vehicles and things like that. So um, it's it's easily done, but at the same time, it needs to be right. Okay, so uh, making sure that that's all there, making sure that there's a GV79 on file for any any op, um, maintenance providers that are actually on the on the system there as well. So everything is on there, and it's a really easy way to make sure that you've got everything right. So that's the first step, and it's quite easy to do. The second thing is not so easy. Um, it's, it's easy to do or it's easy to say to do, but in practice, it can be a bit of a challenge. So you may need some help. But um, the second area is around vehicle maintenance and making sure that vehicles are maintained, they're serviced in line with the expectations that have been put on the operator license. So if that's six weeks, it's six weeks. It might be eight, 10 or 12 weeks, but to make sure that they happen within the specified time that you've agreed. So making sure that happens, auditing it to make sure that it's going ahead. It can be really tricky on bigger fleets, but you know this is really aimed at those people who are maybe operating two or three vehicles um, or maybe up to 20 vehicles. So it can get more challenging the bigger the bigger the company. Um, however, we need to make sure that those services are carried out in time to make sure that we forward plan them as well. So we need to have a planner in place as well as making sure. So one of the things that are really, really vital is making sure we get that MOT pass. So we're measuring how often uh, the vehicles pass MOT first time and the MOT pass rate. So any time that a vehicle fails an MOT, that will negatively impact an OCRS score or the operator compliance risk score. It will negatively impact it. So it's really vital that we make sure if we need to, we pay our maintenance provider to do the additional checks that are needed, that they do the inspection and then they recheck it after the repairs have carried out. It may be worth having voluntary brake tests if you need to or any other voluntary checks done prior to the MOT. So it'd be worth speaking to a good maintenance provider about that. And as the operator, you are responsible for your uh, for your maintenance provider, so that might even be a main dealer. You might just have one vehicle, and the main dealer might be looking after that vehicle, but ultimately, you are responsible for what they do and making sure that your vehicle's roadworthy and safe. So even though they're the specialist, you need to take the, the responsibility for that too. So it's really important that you have a good record in place of how you manage that relationship with your um, with your maintenance provider and make sure you have the right forms in place, and that's the GV79 Annex D. Um, 
forward planning yeah so making sure that you've got a wall chart in place is really good um and making sure that it includes taco calibrations because tacos need to be calibrated digital ones every two years um and make sure that they're done in time services are on their inspections and oil changes as well as making sure that your vehicle has loaded brake tests as well uh the recommendation is to do it every service because we need to make sure that they're loaded and the brakes are performing um but you need to have at least three a year and they need to be loaded there's a lot of people out there who don't do laid brake tests some some maintenance providers will push back because it's inconvenient and it could be a pain but it's really really important that we make sure we have loaded brake tests okay and then the other one is making sure that drivers do carry out their daily checks which was one of the uh, things i mentioned earlier so making sure that drivers do do their walk around checks and there's ways you can manage that whether you're a transport specialist or not you're able to just go out and make sure that they've been carried out before they leave the yard do a walk around with them make sure that everything has been checked make sure that everything's working okay make sure that there's no bulbs out make sure there's no defects on any of the tires you don't need to be a mechanic to be able to do a proper walk around check but it is worth having had some training and it does form part of the driver cpc as well which leads me nicely on to the third area which is drive management it's really good timing because someone's drilling a wall in the background uh, hopefully you can't hear it too badly but it's frustrating me um, but Driver, driver management is a third area, and um, that's really important that we make sure we get those contracts correct, making sure that we check licenses, not just initially when we employ drivers, but also on an ongoing basis to make sure that you know we, we need to report any additional points that have uh, occurred. We need to make sure we check those, make sure that the drivers are meeting our, our insurance obligations. A lot of insurance companies will want to know if drivers have got more than six points and if they have more than any more than six points in one in one go as well. Um, so that's really important to make sure we check those on an ongoing basis. And if there's any changes, then we need to have a conversation and look to report that to the traffic commissioner as well. OK, um, making sure that you have an ongoing development plan for your drivers as well. That, that would include driver CPC, but also toolbox talks making sure that we're managing training on a proactive and ongoing basis can form part of that management system, as well as making sure that we investigate any accidents and near misses and making sure that the vehicle is loaded correctly as well. So we need to make sure that someone competent is, is loading the vehicle and making sure that it's loaded correctly all the time as well, because that's one of the, one of the important undertakings as well making sure that we have a disciplinary process that's followed because we need to make sure that we manage where drivers have to operate under EU driver's hours rules and using the tachograph, we need to make sure that those rules are being followed effectively as well. So it, it can be quite a complex system. I break it down into two points, which is vehicle maintenance and driver management, but there's quite a lot within that management system that we need to consider. So maybe just stop the video, go back and have a listen back and make some notes or, or maybe ask for a bit of help. I'm more than happy to have a chat with anyone that, that feels like they may need that additional support. Particularly, you know, for example, I know companies uh, on restricted licenses, they don't need to operate under EU driver's rules. They might operate under a logbook. But we need to make sure that that logbook process is is correct obviously with current um with current uh vehicles we might be operating on a logbook but that might have a that will have a, a digital taco so if the logbook's not matching up with the tachograph then we could be looking at problems too so it's just making sure that we're fully aware of any of those challenges that we may face the fourth area is just make sure that we get good software systems in place. There's lots and lots of options out there and people who do similar jobs to me will recommend all types of different software. But it's really, really important that you get something that works well for you. There's lots of really nice integrated systems where you can have your vehicle management and your driver check management and then your driver um, your driver management as well with their driver's hours and what have you. And a lot of the manufacturers will be able to give you something which will, will, will work at one. But just make sure that you've got access access to those and you're regularly checking them, um, making sure that you're downloading the vehicle um, and the driver card within within the required amounts and making sure you're analysing those, you're speaking and recording any infringements that have taken place. But the software does help you to do all that. So making sure that's set up at the outset is not really important. And you may have a couple of different systems, so making sure you understand what each of them do and what their limitations are. Excellent. Um, I've whistled through that quicker than I thought I was going to, so that's fantastic. And then the fifth area, finally, is just to ask if you're unsure, because do you know what? Going to a public inquiry, having to have audits, et cetera, can cause real business disruption. So actually getting the practices right up front is obviously 
going to positively impact road safety, which is most important because our role is to make sure that people are safe on the roads. And, and that's the most vital thing of all. But ultimately, not just the road safety, but also from a business point of view, it will impact your business more um, effectively. You'll be able to be more profitable and having the processes in place will, will help protect you as a business. You know, anything that, that occurs that negatively impacts your business from a public inquiry point of view or even from driver management point of view as well is published. It's out there. It's in the public domain. So it's really important as brand becomes more important, as your business reputation becomes more important, it's, it's vital that we make sure that we get these processes right because the last thing you want to do is to um, have a really, really good profile for your business. You've spent lots of um, and invested lots of time, money, and it can all be ruined overnight by, you know, one one thing can make it all unravel. So it's so important that we protect you as a business from um, from making sure that you don't 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 come come a cropper. Like I say, apologies to anyone who knows all this stuff already, um, but there's plenty of people out there who are running vehicles that don't. So hopefully this reaches the right people. And if you know those people, then do share it with them um, because it's it's really important for, for road safety, for the safety of the public and for the safety of your business reputation as well to make sure that we get it nailed, okay? But yeah, if anyone wants any help or has anyone got any questions, then drop me a line, drop me a message. I'm here to help, okay? Um, thank you very much and take care. Have a great day. I really hope you loved today's episode and if you did please make sure you subscribe and listen out for future episodes too please do share it across your social media channels we hope to reach more and help more people if you want to find out more about me my name's pete rushmer you'll find me across any social media channel and my business flagship partners and we're your partners in success across your business thank you see you again soon